are you? Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Another beautiful day here in uh, Aspen, Colorado, and thank you for having us here. Yeah, warm for, day. Warm day. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I love skiing, so I would love to come here skiing, but we came to drive. Yeah. There are two very important cars for Jaguar, right? I mean, very, very important. Yeah. In, and I guess in both ends of the lineup, right? Because this is, we're driving the XC right now, which is uh, completely new. Yep. And another completely new car, the F Pace, which is, uh, everybody's been waiting for that car for a long time. For yeah. both cars, actually, our, right? Yeah, it's our first ever SUV and our new entry to the compact sports sedan segment. Yeah. So this car, um, obviously, Jaguar has been very successful in the past 10 years. I mean, since you've been independent. Yeah. Uh, and you launched like, a, a lot of new fabulous cars, the F Type. I yep. mean, what a hit that car is. Still, very, right? Very I fortunate. mean, like, yeah. everybody loves it. But this car is very important because it adds, I, with the two additions, you now have five models, right? Yes. It's for the first time in our 80 year history, we have five models. So it's a big, big moment for, uh, for Jaguar as a whole. Yeah. So it's a uh, XE, which is this one. Yep. XF, which debuted what last year only, or uh, a couple de years yeah, ago? debuted in November, and yeah. uh, we did the drives of that in December. You may remember. Yeah, in Sedona, yeah. absolutely. Yep. Then the uh, XJ, which now is yeah. the oldest car in the lineup. It is, right? and it still looks fresh. I know, so exactly. It's amazing. Yeah. And then uh, the F Type. Yep. Both coupe and convertible, and now the F uh, Base. Yep. Yeah. So let's start with this one. Um, this car, obviously. A, a lot of competition, really tough competition in this segment, but this car yeah. has a lot of new things to yeah. to to be able to compete with uh, traditional models in this segment, let's say. Absolutely, yeah. The um, compact sports sedan segment's actually the largest segment, the largest the largest number of cars are sold within the premium segment within the compact sports sedan um, area. So when you're looking at like BMW 3 Series, 4 Series, um, Mercedes C-Class, um, Infiniti Q50, Audi A4, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so it's an incredibly competitive segment, but um, we like to think that we have a, a pretty compelling uh, compelling product on our hands. So let's talk a little bit about, uh, let's start with the power chain. You have yeah. two variants for this one, right? Uh, two variants for, or actually three variants, okay. sorry. Uh, we're driving two variants here in, uh, in Aspen. We have a, a, a two liter, um, uh, turbocharged four-cylinder which is the entry to the car starts at 34,900 and then we have a, a two-liter diesel which is our first ever uh, wholly designed in-house built manufactured diesel it's called an Ingenium diesel okay and then um, at the top of the range we have a 340 horsepower three-liter supercharged V6 yeah. We both uh, we drove the, the diesel uh -huh. yesterday and I really liked it I mean yeah. it's just can almost don't tell much of a difference unless you start like doing with the torque. Yeah. And then that that car it's, because it's less power but more torque and like it it's really got almost as much torque as the V6, as yeah. the three liter V6, and it's really really refined. It's a super quiet diesel. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, most people, if you don't tell that it's a diesel, most people wouldn't, and that yep. they don't know, but they probably we, wouldn't notice, right? We had that with a few journalists on this uh, on this trip. Yeah. So and then uh, the exterior design, I mean, resembles the the, the the style of the new style of uh, Jaguar. Yep. Uh, under uh, under Ian Callum's design direction, his kind of goal is to make every every Jaguar instantly recognizable as a Jaguar. Yeah. Her, it starts uh, uh, from the grill, obviously, and uh, the new lights and everything, both yeah. in the front and the back. Yeah, we're I mean we're still a niche brand. We aren't BMW. We aren't Mercedes. We aren't Audi. So. Um, People don't see these cars all the time. Yeah, um, and that's an advantage, and, and, I think. And, right? and, ho and hopefully that'll change with the yeah. XE and the F pace. But no, but I mean, it's an advantage. I was just talking to a, a, a colleague of mine uh, from Miami. I like Miami, you know, it's like one of the cities where you have a lot of people that like, show up. Yeah, yeah. And you much. see a lot of BMWs, a lot of uh, Mercedes, but like, you don't see that many, and it's still like really, yeah. really nice looking. But as you said, like the base price for this one is not that high, so I no. mean, it's a really, really good. Yeah, it's a great. Offer. It's a great entry point to the brand, both the F Pace and the XE. Um, we think they'll be they'll be pretty successful. So then, when we come to the interior of the car, the yeah. first thing that people look this is, which is really, really nice. I yeah, mean, this, this is probably the first thing most people will notice. This is our new um, high-level infotainment system. It's called In Control Touch Pro. 
Um, so on the XE and the F Pace, you get this 10.2 inch screen. Um, and then on the F Pace, um, right in front of the driver, replacing the standard dials is a 12.3 inch TFT screen where you can display nav up in front map of and you. everything, yeah. Yeah, you can kind of swap screens in between. And this has been, I mean, we have to admit, I, I hope you, yep. you agree with me, previous uh, systems were kind of difficult sure. to, to work with. And this is like so easy. Yeah. I mean, as you can see, you can pinch in, pinch out. Pinch to zoom, move, just like in yeah. a smartphone. And then if you go to the home button here, you have all these tiles. They're customizable, um, but then you can just swipe as you see fit. So bring really, in, really bring in the, the way that we use all the other devices yeah. in our lives, like phones, iPads, and everything, just like exactly the same yeah. technology. Yeah. The idea is is it uh, to be very, very intuitive so you don't have to take your eyes off the road. And uh, are there any new features within the system besides the screen? Yeah, um, you know, since this is a demo model, I doubt that it has it installed, but In Control Apps is our own uh, proprietary um, app system. You can download through uh, either Android or um, uh, the iTunes Store as well. Um, so you can have apps like uh, NPR One, you can have Stitcher, um, you can even connect to like Spotify and whatnot through the stereo. It's really, really cool. And um, the way that you can input, uh, obviously we're driving now, so it wouldn't let us put a, a, Correct, yeah. a destination, but that has changed completely to like, you can actually just type a few letters and it will start oh, like, giving you a It's a very, list, very right? quick. So the new system, apart from having, you know, swipe and pinch to zoom like a smartphone, um, it actually has more computing power than a lot of tablets out there. Oh, wow. um, this system is powered by an Intel quad-core processor and then all the peripherals. So everything that feeds into the system um, is connected with automotive ethernet. So it's very, very quick, very responsive. There's no yeah, delay you can, as you're yeah, entering. Yeah, you in. can tell any any function that you do is like immediate. Yep. And the map, I mean, I, I think the map, the display of the map is really... Yeah. There's all sorts of different views of the map too. This is a 2D top-down. Um, we have a 3D option and satellite option. When the car is equipped with a data connection at low speeds, it'll actually pull up um, satellite data as well. Um, and then as you're arriving to your destination, it'll give you door-to-door -door, um, directions. And if you download the app onto your phone, you can get- Oh, you out, bring it with you, you and can, then you yeah, can Yeah, you can get okay. out of your car and it'll give you walking directions to wherever you're going. So you never get lost. That's fantastic new uh, technology. It's incredible yeah. how technology is getting uh, with every aspect of, every, of what we use in the, our daily lives yep. into the cars, huh? Yeah, it's amazing. Whole idea is to create a better user experience. And uh, now let's talk about the uh, F-Pace. I mean, the SUV that has been uh, on the top for like a, a few years now, and yep. like. We've seen what an SUV has done for other manufacturers. Just look at Porsche. <laughs> I know. The Macan and the Cayenne are the number yeah, one. Yeah, Porsche and was two. almost dead, right? Yeah. And, uh, and people were here yeah. crying. The purists were crying. Oh, how can Porsche be yeah. an SUV? But well, here we go. The, the fact of the matter is, is those cars, um, the higher volume cars, those are what allow car manufacturers to build yeah. some of the really, really fun cars. And that's not to say that XE and F Pace aren't fun. <laughs> Because dynamically they're great, but it allows us to build, you know, the F types of the world, the halo cars, yeah, the real sports cars. Absolutely. Yeah. And and another thing is that consumers are demanding to have that kind absolutely. of cars. I mean, people want to have both worlds, right? Like yep. utility, have fun, but like also have like space for the family and everything. Yeah, I said, uh, you know, I said earlier that the compact sports sedan market's the um, the largest uh, market within the premium automotive segment, but uh, performance SUVs like the F Pace or the um, Audi Q5 or the Porsche Macan, um, that's actually the fastest growing segment. Um, so you see more and more buyers going towards uh, SUVs and crossovers. So what do we have there in terms of uh, powertrain for the F-Pace? So you've also got three powertrain options there. You have a, a diesel, the same uh, 20D 20, uh, 20 2 liter uh, Ingenium diesel that's available in the XE. And then you have two versions of the three liter supercharged gas V6. You have a 340 horsepower version, and then on the top trim levels like the F-Pace S, um, F-Pace First Edition, you have a 380 horsepower. Yeah. 
and um, that car uh, also the design it's really stunning. I mean, it really yeah. you can really tell it's a it's a Jaguar from every, every angle. Ian Callum and his team did an excellent job with that car, in my opinion. Yeah. So with the F-Type uh, debuted, I remember that they were telling us that you were you had such great demand and you were working 24/7 in the factories back then. In the, yeah. In the UK, I, I guess with two new models. I mean, I just can't imagine what's going on in that in that. Uh, yeah, we've, we've seen uh, pretty large increases in our production capability. Um, as you may or may not have heard, we've announced the um, uh, construction of two new plants, one in Austria um, and then another whose location has not been announced yet um, just to accommodate such increased yeah. production. Yeah. So these are currently being built in the UK, right? Yeah, all Jaguar products in the uh, in the US are all built in uh, in the UK. Okay. I think we forgot to mention a key point in, in the F Pace uh, talk, which is the price. I mean, uh, we talk about this one. This goes from thirty four, you said, to what? Yeah, essentially thirty five thousand is thirty four thousand nine hundred. Um, the F Pace actually starts at just under forty one thousand, forty thousand nine ninety. So. Um, really, really good entry points for both cars to the brand. And what's the the most you can spend in both the uh, XC and the XC? The the F Pace base price tops out at about just under seventy thousand for a very limited edition version called the First Edition. Um, that's limited to two hundred units, but if you look at regular production cars, um, F Pace tops out at about fifty six. Okay. And wow, that's not that's you not can, a lot. Yeah, you can add options, um, and it gets a bit more expensive. Oh, well, um, thank you very much for having us here again. Um, thank you for coming. We really enjoyed both cars. And um, I mean, Jaguar has been in a really successful run in the past few years, but I just, with this one, I think you're gonna be very busy for the next We're... years to come because you not only have this, I mean, probably you won't tell me, but I mean, yeah, there are so many variants that you can add into every model, like, like you do with all, all the other cars. Yeah, right? it's an exciting time for us. We're, uh, we're really looking forward to what the, what the future holds. Thanks, sir. Thank you very much, Nate. Thank you, sir. We're going to keep enjoying here uh, the driving uh, around Aspen. Yep. Thank you.